welcome to the Motorsport Coaching Podcast, sponsored by Motivate Training and Management. This is a podcast where we talk to drivers and industry experts to help you maximize your performances on and off the track. Let's get started with today's show. Hello, guys, and welcome to episode 63 of the Motorsport Coaching Podcast. I am your host, Belinda Risley. And today, guys, I want to start off, first of all, saying a very big apology for not putting out some podcasts in the last fortnight or so. I have been suffering from bronchitis. <clears throat> Sorry. As you can hear, I am still not fully recovered. So I've had to delay as some of the upcoming podcasts as I couldn't pretty much talk. But never fear, we're back on track and hopefully going forward every week now on Thursday at six o'clock, these podcasts will be coming free to air to you. So please um, continue to listen and thank you very much for listening to date. Today, guys, we have Cody Mackay from Cody Mackay Motorsports. Um, Cody is an older motorsport athlete at 31. He's been really nailing down on his sponsorship and I wanted to get him onto the show basically for him um, to explain his story when it comes to business and sponsorship and how he's gone about it and basically the advantages of being that older athlete and when it comes to sponsorship dealings. So Cody is currently the founder, the team owner, and the driver of Cody Mackay Motorsports. He's a business owner of After Hours Mechanical. Um, currently, it's going to be rebranding to Radical Mechanical this spring. And currently, he's competing in the Aussie Race Cars and New South Wales PT with Race Academy International. I've got lots of it out of today's show, guys, so I hope you do as well. Grab your pen and paper. Um, if you're driving, um, make sure you continue to listen on when you stop as hopefully you'll get some great tools and tips from today's show. Have a great week, guys, and we'll see you next week. Let's get started. Hey, Cody, welcome to the Motorsport Coaching Podcast. How are you today? Mate, I am absolutely fantastic. I'm pumped to be on this podcast. I love talking about myself anyway. So, yeah, I'm happy. Let's get into it. Yeah, and I'm excited to have you on the show because you have fantastic stories to share with us today. Yes. Tell us a little bit about yourself. You're a driver from Newcastle in New South Wales, Australia. Yep. What's your journey? Yeah, so, well, I started my motorsport journey a little bit different to what most people do. Um, you know, we did have a go-kart when we were younger. Me and my brother shared and did a couple of races here and there, but nothing really came of it. You know, mum and dad were doing the best they can to support the family, and as you can imagine, a motorsport budget was um, not really fitted into their business ideas as much as they love cars themselves. Um, so I really... St- as a passionate fan and just a, a general enthusiast of cars, you know, we had that break when we were younger. When I was 18, I jumped straight back into it with my first paycheck as a mechanic, mm-hmm. um, bought myself a go-kart and pretty much just try and climb the steps at a later stage, going through a couple of production cars, doing a few drive days here and there, a bit of training and more racing as much as I can until we've um, finally stepped up into the Aussie racing cars, a dream of mine. So, um, Yeah, you could say for a 31-year-old, I'm at my pinnacle. Yeah, fantastic. (laughs) Well, that's one great thing about this sport. There's no real peak time, is it? So it's not an age-dependent sporting. Exactly right. So, yeah, it's all about what goals you want to set out. Um, We were very specific when we jumped into the Aussie racing cars of this is an ultimate goal and that we want to really concentrate on this series as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do get a few opportunities here and there from other things, but... um, yeah, we're putting everything into this basket instead of trying to jump between categories and be this all-time great. We want to be great at what we've got. So, um, yeah, that's where we've really pushed into and focused in this. So you started your motorsport team only a few years ago. I think it was back in 2015. Yeah, so well, that's when we kind of officially started in more of the professionalism of the team. So that's when we started with our promotion, drawing sponsors, trying to move up through the ranks more, um, you know, swapping from carts to cars, which is a big step in itself. Doing the deals, the handshakes, the um, the little bit of going around the back and all this type of stuff just to get in. So we had to have that online presence and, you know, which where we pushed our, um, our websites and our social media sense and all that type of stuff because, as we know, motorsport's expensive. You need sponsors. Yeah. And you can't get that if you're not out there actively promoting yourself in those um, brands as well. So, yeah, we've kind of been – I know I've been racing for probably around 15 years but in more professionalism, yeah, it's been that last five years that we've been pushing it. 
and you definitely can't miss you out on the track. <laughs> you yes. You have very bright colours. So just yeah. tell the people, what are your colours and how do they come about? And was that a, um, did it just kind of fall in your lap or was it an actually planned exercise to have those beautiful colours? Yeah, well, them? it's pro. yeah, well, that's the one thing. Um, I'm always some, a type of person that needs to be bright, loud, out there and different. Um, that's very important when you're, you know, going for sponsors or approved business, you need that point of difference. Um, the thing is like the Hawaiian prints and graphics and t-shirts, we look like we're straight out of Miami Vice. You probably yep. see I'm growing a mustache now. I know our view, our podcast listeners can't, but it's getting around our social media. That's one thing I just personally loved as a, um, you know, we used to wear Hawaiian shirts and all this as mates and thought it was funny. Then it kind of got fashionable and rolled from there. So we're like, well, why aren't we investing this into our business? Why aren't we investing it into our motorsport team? to really stand out. No one really designs race cars to look as sexy as what they can with graphic designers today. So yeah, we pushed it. We just think everything that's like 1980s Miami, we want <laughs> in the car and we yeah. get so much response from it where people absolutely love it. So yeah, call us, um, yeah, put us on that top of um, avenue. And so, again, is that purposely your brand? So, yeah, I'll be yeah. right and bring it out there. Um, yep. Now, over the last five years, you developed it. So, you do have a beautiful, I'm going to say pink and blue, but <laughs> you've got a bit more distinctive description for those colours. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So, I, I, love, I love purple and pinks purple. and blues and blacks. They're just a personal favourite colour of mine. So, I always try and run there. And um, I always like the black in the background because it kind of hides some of the tyre marks when you have a mm -hmm. few rubs and stuff like that while trying to be bright. But, yeah, that was our, um, our distinctive branding of Cody Mackay Motorsports. Um, and it's very funny. We're taking this branding to sponsors and everyone in between. And we found that a lot of our sponsors kind of want to jump on that branding. Um, yes, you do get some that are very specific with their marketing teams and how they do things. They need to be represented a specific way. But we found that a lot of our sponsors are like, no, we love how bright and loud and it fits in with our company. Right. We've actually, values. Yep. Exactly. We've actually redesigned um, businesses logos to suit the car which is a very rare and very hard thing to do. I know with, um, I believe it was Penrite Racing at the um, Super or Sandown 500. That, um, that, yeah, they got the sponsors on board to rebrand all their logos to suit the styling of the car for their retro livery. So for us to do that as a team, you know, and the big teams are struggling with that, we felt very privileged to, um, yeah, be a part of that process. And so, Cody, as you mentioned, you are at, later bloomer in the yep. industry and do you think that has its advantages now when it comes to doing things like sponsorship and branding and social media one because you're more the wiser but um obviously you don't necessarily have the achievements behind you like you're saying like through carts you've done different things mm -hmm. um, do, but do you think being older and having more of an awareness for again sponsorship and stuff has helped yeah, yeah, I definitely think it does. Um, and I, I see a lot of like, younger drivers coming out through the ranks and they can be very, a lot, not confused, but misguided on directly where, they've, um, where they're going to put their marketing, their brand and everything and how to take care of their sponsors as well. I learned all this the hard way. I didn't do any business courses or anything. I started my own business and learned by investing a lot of my money into black holes that yeah. this is what works, this is what doesn't work, this is what businesses want to see. And now that you're a little bit older, you get that little bit more respect. You can talk from previous experiences of what's going on. Um, and, yeah, that gave me that little bit of an edge because, no, I'm, you know, I'm not the most accoladed driver in the world. There's a lot of other drivers out there doing a lot better than me. But, yeah, we put that difference of we're here to look after your brand and your um, company to get promoted and from that I hopefully want to do well from racing so um yeah the younger drivers that I'm seeing like a coach or someone like your services itself is something that you they probably need to invest in it's an investment for them it's not a you know a sinkhole for money mm -hmm. to really guide them on the knowledge that I might take in as this common knowledge um so yeah being that little bit older has um probably helped me as a little bit more than everyone else and I guess um, one of the biggest challenges, I guess, that the junior competitors have is because they don't seem to have anything to offer. They feel like mm. when it comes to benefits for sponsors. Mm -hmm. um, being like regional base, 
yourself in Newcastle mm -hmm. um, and then going out. I guess the benefits that you can offer is going to be different to what the junior can, but it's kind of like the similar challenges. Yeah, well, uh, that was one thing. You sent me this question earlier and it really kind of rattled my brain a little bit. Being a regional town that Newcastle still is, I know it's getting bigger, but it's still mm -hmm. regional, we do have that benefit of we want the locals giving it a go. So we want to support the local, which that loses translation in, say, like a Sydney or Melbourne market because everyone's so big, you know, they're so focused on this stuff, they're so time poor that they don't care if a local Melbourne boy is giving it a go because there's 20,000 local Melbourne boys or girls giving it a go. Um, but the off turn of that as well is being a regional town. Yes, we're a big mining town. The money that you might be able to secure in a big city like Sydney or Melbourne or any capital city isn't really there for us for the taking. So while we can get a lot of easy, small sponsorship, getting those bigger ticket items that you really want to secure to run your team is um, something that you definitely struggle with that you might have a bit more of advantage in in those bigger towns so yeah we do have our troubles but we do have our advantages yeah and then how do you go about finding sponsorship in newcastle yeah are you, yeah are you attending local networking meetings um yeah. are you pulling it off the back of your business <laughs> yeah mate, i am i like to say all i am above. yeah all of the about i am beg borrowing and stealing it's yeah. you know it comes down to the typical tactics um you know linkedin's a powerful tool that we use facebook's a powerful tool that we use cold calling we've done cold calls to businesses before before rounds and that's gone really well but it's also gone really really bad as well um on that coming off that experience it's like you've got to get out there and try it i'm still green to some things as well but it's pretty much trying to um throw the net out the back of your fishing boat mm -hmm. and catch as many fish as you can in as many different areas as you can instead of just focusing on one way of you know walking in the shops and doing all that type of stuff or, you know, just doing a, one social media post. You're just trawling, 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 grabbing as much data as you can to then make a package to um, hopefully get some sponsors in and promote their products. I'm going to put you on the spot here, Cody. Um, mm -hmm. What are some of those areas that they can trawl into? Yeah, yeah. Um, so if I name a couple off the top of my head, LinkedIn seems to be working well. Facebook works well. Um, I've seen others work well on Instagram. I've got to admit, we aren't that strong on Instagram because I'm probably a little bit older. The younger audience gain that a lot better. Um, general conversations, talking about it all the time. I do attend business networking meetings for other reasons, but I always have the motorsport team as something to pitch there as well. Um, yeah, networking, networking, networking is one of those things. I've secured sponsorships, a major sponsorship, down at the pub having drinks with someone. Mm -hmm. It can happen. Like, it, it will happen. you just got to be passionate and talk about it. So, um, yeah, there are a couple of the key ones I've done. There are others, um, little ones here and there, but they pop up every now and again. Um, they surprise you on every corner. So, yeah. All right. I tell fun. everybody, you need to be living, eating and breathing sponsorship. It's not. Yeah. Um, something that you can just look at once or twice per year, you know, when exactly. your racing, racing's coming towards the end or when it's the financial year coming up. Sponsorship is something that you need to be nurturing, networking, mm -hmm. um, continuing to do pretty much 24-7, 365 Ex days a year. Exactly. It, like, people, um, especially the young um, listeners out there, should be wary. It nearly becomes a full-time job. It is. Um, for example... But today, I've taken a full day off working at my business. So literally, I'm losing money from my business, not making a profit, to focus on maintaining and securing those extra sponsors for the rest of the season and for the next seasons as well. Um, it's one thing that you've just got to do during business hours. You, know, you only do business during business hours. No one wants a phone call at 8 o'clock. Saturday mornings didn't work for us. Sunday, putting proposals in the middle of the night. We just had to make sacrifices, move our little bit of work here and there and just dedicate the time to it. So, um, yeah, that's one of those things as well. And have you found that you've fallen in love with sponsorship or, or do you still feel like it's a bit of a chore? Because I feel like you're quite passionate like I am about it now. Yeah, <laughs> um, it's, it's amazing. I was like, don't get me wrong, I love... I love racing, you know, I love motors, I love cars, I work on them for a living, I do everything in between the engineering side of it. But I've actually found this new love of networking, meeting and securing sponsors. I love that. It's just, 
it's I've always been that business orientated person. I always wanted to be able to have coffees and talk, you know, deals because you know you can do more money just in talking to someone than what you actually do doing the job. Um, so yeah, it becomes a thing. Yes, it becomes stressful sometimes, like everything, and you're kind of rattled a bit, and you might make the wrong move, and you're stressed, and you're awake at the middle of the night. But at the end of the day, I've got a love for it that I keep engaging with that keeps me going. So it's just, to me, it's just one of the requirements of running a business that's a race team, if we consider it a business, which you should, yep. um, to keep it all going. So yeah, all up for it. Fantastic. And then once you get those clients coded, what do you do to keep them on board or to keep nurturing that relationship? Yeah, so um, one thing that I've been very, very adamant on, and I think my favourite term to throw around is sticker slappers. It's just one thing that we hear all the time is, oh, yeah, we're going to promote your business by putting a sticker on our go-kart, our car, and everything like that. Mm -hmm. Well, that worked in the 1970s when people were attending big events like that. But at the end of the day, that's the final thing we do. That's the final bit that we'll do for um, a customer or a sponsor or anything else. Um, You'll want to collaborate closely with your sponsors. You want to talk to them about what their needs are, how they're trying to promote their target demographic. So then you can try and customise your team to their product. You might be giveaways together. It might be video projects together. You might become a brand ambassador and start passionately talking about their products, which is one thing that we're kind of, um, in the moment of um, dealing with people at the moment. You are there to represent their product and you've got to do everything you possibly can to represent their product with the last thing being the sticker on the car. Because um, most people, they wouldn't even care if there's a sticker on their car or on your car or not. They're probably not even going to see it, but they want to see what you're bringing the business to them. So little things that we just do. We've got a sponsor's day coming up as well. We're putting people in hot laps of cars. We've got a full simulator room booked down at Eastern Creek where we get the sponsors in and fans in to kind of come around the experience. Like, just think of what all the V8 Supercard teams are doing, the F1 teams, and try and copy it at a budget level. That's all we're trying to do. and when you're smart about it, you can achieve it. So, but I'm giving away all my secrets here and I don't want to give away too much. <laughs> no, we appreciate it. We appreciate it. Thank you very much <laughs> before I die. Um, so we talked a little bit about um, social media mm-hmm. and that you're not on Insta, or you're not as, as um, predominant on Instagram. But, yeah. um, so do you do your own social media? Do you outsource that or tell us how that all works? Yeah, we, we do it. Um, the majority of it's through me. Um, so just because I generally like doing it that I do all my social media as well. It saves me the, um, it saves the ongoing cost of being with a marketing team as well, which can be very, very expensive. So between me and my partner, Alyssa, or you know my manager, however you want to call it, um, I usually put the post out. She does all the spell checking and fixing for it before we send it out. And we, we collaborate together on little things that we should do copying, like not, not in the sense copying, you want that point of difference, but seeing how other people do things and trying to be a little bit out there while copying the rhythm as well. Um, and just using all the knowledge that we've kind of gained over the years with business wise and race team wise to try and push it out there. Yeah, and we talked about different forms of communication. So we know when it comes to social media content, we can post mm-hmm. an image, we can mm-hmm. do videos, we can also do blogs. And yep. from reviewing of your content, mm-hmm. I feel like that you like to express yourself more so with your funny blogs. Yeah. Um, is, is that your preferred method of communication to people? Absolutely. Right? I hate writing blogs. I'm oh, going to really? be totally honest with you, you know, but blogs were one of those things that, I struggle to really get into. Um, it doesn't come across that way. No, well, I, well, then again, it comes down to my partner helping with the editing of it as well. Um, so, yeah, I wasn't an English major, you know, and all that type of stuff. I really struggle when it comes to those types of things. Um, but I do love to talk about things passionately that I'm in love with. So I kind of put it together of like, hey, it's a bit of a need, um, but I've got to make it a bit of a want as well. And after about the fifth article, I know I'm onto my fifth or sixth blog. I kind of just put them out as regularly as I can. It's a bit unscheduled. Um, You start to kind of talk a bit more passionately about them as well. So, yes, it was one thing that I really struggled with, but then I made it my own and talked to them about it like my own. And 
try to put, you know, this unhinged, unprofessional, but professional coding onto it to, yeah, to show a little bit behind the scenes and an in-depth of what people want to see. So um, if they want that more content, that more in-depth, that real nitty gritties, the blogs or, you know, some in-depth videos is where we show it the best. Yeah, and are you going to be um, going to more video in 2020? Um, yes. Um, well, we're, we're really lucky. We've got um, two video teams that we, which are good mates of mine. One of them's um, SJR Media, mm -hmm. and the other one is Elliot. Um, he's another um, another media guy as well that we kind of bounce between them. Um, they're really good. They're good friends and they kind of understand what we're doing as well, which we had in the last race in Newcastle. We had a media a camera guy for every day just filming us, getting content. Um, any stuff I do on the side, I can do just plainly from my GoPro. Um, yep. I did a video of how like the engines work in an Aussie racing car. I just shot that with a little pedestal, um, pedestal and a GoPro attached to it and just talked openly of what I find with the engines and what we're doing and all little information I know. So videos are a big content. Videos, um, our social media wants videos. They want everyone to go to videos. So we're trying to be as professional as we can within the budget to show that professionalism to um, everyone else by our videos. Yeah, and like you said, though, it doesn't need um, to be expensive. You don't need to have a video team on board. You can certainly just use your GoPro or your iPhone mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. Samsung phone, whatever it is. Yeah. And it just comes down to the quality of the content that you're delivering. Exactly. What it is. And I always try to say to all the drivers, people always seem to get stuck around content ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, my biggest gripe is seeing no content until a race week and yeah. then all for race week and then you might see the Monday or the Tuesday for the, the race week up and then there's nothing for another four or five weeks into the next race week. Yeah, exactly. And people, yeah, go, well, what else can I post? And it's like mm. at the end of the day, I try to say that um, mostly that you're living people's dreams. Yeah. So your sponsors' dreams or whether it's your fans' dream. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Basically, people that are following you want to know what happens inside that race car, what happens mm -hmm. behind the scenes. So, you know, behind the scenes for the next four or five weeks, you're going to be working on the car. You're going to be replacing parts. You're going to yeah. be um, maybe having a test day, depending on what category you race. You might be doing mm -hmm. a smaller race meeting interstate. But people want to see all that. They want to see everything, basically, about what happens, whether you capture that by the video or by just one image or by writing a daily blog, mm -hmm. uh, people want to know about it. So I always just yeah. say, put something out there regardless. Exactly, yeah. You've got to get out there as much as possible because any of the algorithms or anything, I know I'm not an expert on them, but the less you post, the more likely you are to fall under the surface. Um, so, yeah, that's why we try and pump as much as we can. We've got, you know, methods of how regularly we should put them out. And we notice that even just by putting them out regularly, we're getting more of that following or more of that natural, um, natural organic reach coming through instead of paid reaches and all that type of stuff. So, yeah, content, like you want to be, you know, we kind of want to be on topic while being side of topic. You don't want to put for five weeks from what I've learned pictures of your dogs. Yes, everyone loves dogs, but they're there for the racing. They want to see you racing, not, you know, cute photos of babies and puppies and memes and stuff like that. They like a little mixture of it, right. but their main focus is to racing, to live your dream. So we try to show that as passionately and as professional as possible in promoting our things. And what's your take on um, your own public relations? I'm thinking that that's something that you guys do really well. Um, yeah. You reached out to, to get your, um, this interview today, which was fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, how do you promote yourself through the media outlets going forward for each race meeting? Yeah, so you've got to be, um, you've got to learn the area you're going to. You've got to understand what's going on and all the, um, you know, the newspapers, the local news and all that type of stuff there. Being Newcastle, when our local, the Newcastle 500 was here, we were lucky that we knew or had the contacts. So we could get in newspapers, which um, there was a few other media outlets. Uh, we got it in the local magazine. We got a full front page cover in the local magazine. And um, that was actually amazing. I thought nothing had come from that, but a lot of people have actually said, oh, we've seen you in the magazine. You know, we didn't expect you. We didn't even tell us you were racing. You know, people that weren't connected or couldn't see my social media, we're now connecting because they see me through another avenue. So you try and, um, you try and connect with them as much as possible. 
Mm -hmm. um, you try and get your contacts up and you try and keep them up to date with everything that you can do. They might print it. They might tell you to go away. They might love you and want to do everything about you. It just depends on what the editors are thinking for the day. So, but you just got to get out there and plank at everything as much as possible. Yeah. So again, it comes back to networking, building those mm -hmm. relationships and keep nurturing them, sending through stories, um, mm -hmm. whether they get printed or not with high res um, images, I say, yeah. um, and, you know, just keep knocking on those doors and whether it's media, whether it's uh, through local radio stations, mm -hmm. um, you know, business networking directly, even, um, you know, online influencers that are locally known as well. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So, oh, that's one thing as well. We had, um, yeah, we had the local radio station. We had two interviews with them. Um, we said the biggest station in Newcastle, well, the Triple M is um, taken over Newcastle and they're one of the biggest stations in Australia. So to even get on the morning show before the races was a privilege. To even get into the snippets of the new, uh, news articles was a privilege as well. So, um, and they're all avenues that we can use in the future when we're re-attending rounds. So, yeah, mate, networking, getting out there, shaking hands and kissing babies. That's what I like to put it down <laughs> to. You're a politician. <laughs> no, well, that's it. You kind of got, yeah, you just got to push it as much as possible. So, um, yeah, hard work at the end of the day and just getting out there and getting your name out there. Fantastic, Cody. And how can people follow you and see what you're doing? Yeah, so all my social media. So jump onto Facebook and look up Cody Mackay Motorsports. That's M C K A Y. You can also get on our Instagram, which is Cody Mackay underscore Motorsports. We usually do a couple of YouTube videos here and there, but it's mainly those are the best avenues that we're always putting content out on our um, our social media. Um, also our website, if you want to follow our blogs, that's one of them. And yeah, if you're in a professional um, point of view, our LinkedIn profile, I always post as heavily as I can on it. Um, yeah, so I've got those three to four media outlets that I just put regular content on because, well, when you think about it, it's free. I can put yeah. as much stuff on there as possible. Um, so I'm going to tell you as much as possible. So Cool. And so with the Mo, is that, yeah. is that for the brand? Is that for the brand <laughs> or is that, well, is, um, is that just a Cody thing? Yeah, I, oh, I don't know. I, I grew a Mo before and it didn't really suit my look if anything you know i was told i have to stay away from schools last time <laughs> um but no i kind of over the christmas break or relax and just working on cars and stuff like that um kind of grew it out a bit and my partner said hey i, I kind of like this and i've gone okay well i'll grow it as long as you like and as soon as you say that you hate it i'll get rid of it and she's hasn't told me to get rid of it yet so we'll, we'll just kind of roll on with it and then I started liking it and then I think she's starting to hate it because I like it now <laughs> um but yeah it was, just, it was just one thing I've always personally wanted to try growing a mo and just seeing how it goes and yeah it kind of coincidentally fits the brand <laughs> so I reckon it does indeed yeah and um I reckon those that are listening that on the podcast image for this episode, we'll have that photo. With yeah, her. we'll find that one there. <laughs> it's really loud and bright um, branding, which is fantastic to see. Mm, Cody, mm. you've given us lots of advice today, but do you have any parting words for our up and coming motorsport competitors around sponsorship, social media, public relationship? Just basically, like you said, you've been learning this stuff over the last 15 years, really yeah. been nailing it down over the last five years. So through your experience, um, what are some last parting words to the guys and girls today? Oh, last parting advice. Um, that's a good one. Um, clean up your bloody Facebook. That's probably <laughs> the biggest one that I say to most people. Um, like you've got to really consider even your personal Facebook is still your brand. People will find you. People will want to connect with you on that. So if you've got your funny mates tagging you in racial, political, sexist posts or memes or doing anything dirty, you really need to watch that and mate, delete it as much as possible and talk to your mates. Because it might be one thing that you say, oh, look, it's, you know, it's not on my racing profile page and stuff. You will get outed for it. You'll add someone on there. You'll add someone and edit it. And if for whatever reason you crack it big and something happens, they will trawl through your social media <laughs> like no tomorrow. So, um, yeah, try and clean up your act as best as possible <laughs> to be absolutely blunt um, and be the professional that you're trying to sell yourself as. So, um, yeah, just always keep that in the back of your mind. 
Oh, fantastic, Cody. Well, thank you very much for your time and for all your insights today. Yeah, no Hope problem. I have got some great some tips um, from Cody. Again, all of his details, where you can find him, where you can follow his journey. Um, he's very approachable. So if you do have any questions, any follow-up questions from today's show, um, I know he'll be happy to answer them for you. Right, Cody? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Oh, well, not too many. I can't give away all my secrets. Uh, yeah, no, well, no, you've I... given away a lot today, so we do yeah. really appreciate that. So yeah. thanks again, guys. And um, we'll speak to you soon. No worries. Thank you. Thanks. Well, thanks everyone for listening to this week's show. I really hope you enjoyed that one as much as I did. Now, remember all the show notes with the links and the specials mentioned in today's show are available over at motivatetraining.com.au. If you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you could head to iTunes or Stitcher, type in Motorsport Coaching, subscribe and leave us a review. Each week, I'll read them out and you'll go into monthly draw to win a fantastic prize. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at motivatetraining.com.au or head over to our Facebook page at Motivate to Tea. Until next time, take care.